Oh, hey everybody, it's me, your bestie, who's a bestie, the ghost, the hostess with the mostess. I was going to say ghostess, I'm not dead yet. Yet. Back with another top 10 best night list, keeping it theme with my favorite thing to talk about, all the scary things that go bump or uh in the night, horror movies. And I talked a couple episodes back about horror song, or, you know, songs for a Halloween playlist. This, however, is horror the bees themes, you know, you know what I'm talking, if you don't understand what I'm saying when I'm differentiating between a horror theme, my heels are clacking the stool. Um, just looking at the live Twitch chat, which you can join every Tuesday and Thursday when I record these live. All right, cha. Uh, I can do something like that, Claw. Absolutely. Anyway, horror themes. You already probably know what number one or number two is. If you've watched any history about this channel, any of the episodes I've done before, you probably already kind of know. But anyway, nothing nothing can make or break a horror movie like a score. You watch Halloween, you watch Jaws, you watch you know the shower scene in Psycho without the score, and it's it loses over half its effectiveness. It's not even scary. It's still visually spooky, but it's that score to where like you know if I'm walking along at night and I hear the Da, na, na, da, na, na, da, na, da. I'm gonna be more aware of my surroundings. You get what I'm saying? If I'm in the water and I hear da na, da na, I don't care if I'm in my goddamn bathtub or shower or stepping in a puddle, I hear that theme, I'm getting away from water. At least 30 feet away from water. Unless it's the ghost shark from that horrible sci fi movie, which was so bad it was fantastic. But anyway, let's get on with the countdown. Number 10, not a big fan of the franchise, but the Zep, Zeps, Zep, Zeps theme, whatever it's called on the soundtrack, I like the da 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 da. I'm, I'm even imitating it bad because I can't think right now. But the, the main, like, every time, every one of the times the Saw movie ends, it's that theme, like da 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 da. I keep doing Saw Mysteries instead of Zep's theme. But it's the fucking theme from Saw. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, really adds to, like, the, because the, these movies, Love them or hate them, which I'm right in the middle. Love this one, hate that one. Like that, like this one. I only love one of them. You know, hate, you know the other ones are like, eh. You know, I don't watch them every year. Let's put it to you that way. Don't need to. Anyway, all right, Claw. No spoilers. No spoilers. Anyway, the saw theme really because the, the movies build tension all the way up to the end. We're like, oh, the last five minutes of the movie is explaining. What, how, I, how he did everything, you know, the magician's revealing his trick, and this is the dun 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 and it builds and builds and builds, really effective, and that's the key to being a top 10 Vestite or Temeas is being effective. So yeah, love the score, nah, the movies are alright. No, when I met, I had that little caveat where I started to say, like, these don't have, on Twitch at least before the stream, I mentioned, like, I'm talking about, you know, songs, or, you know, these don't have words. And then I quickly recovered because I knew this was on here. I was like, no, you know, well, they have words, but it's not exactly what I would call like lyrics to differentiate. But the score from The Omen, you know, anytime somebody parodies The Omen, it's the score, you know, this, this, it's, whenever you hear the score in a movie, it's not original. It's just parodying The Omen, the Santos, Dominos. Like, um, like if I was walking in a Target uh, with my Moscow Mule in hand. Um, and where the fuck was I going with this? Oh, the omen. And then like it shows me like you know in the movie I'm like I look down at a baby, and then all of a sudden you hear this this theme from the omen. Santos, Dominos. You immediately know that this child is Satan. It's a universal like it works in every language, because it's the universal language music. But yeah, Gary Gary Jerry Goldsmith also did it. Um, I think he did Gremlins, but he did like some Star Trek stuff for the motion picture. This is real big one. Fuck. He did a lot of good, like, notable stuff, but more like older stuff. Uh, but The Omen, in my opinion, is the best thing I've ever done because you hear it all the time. It's an old joke. Like me. Anyway, that was number nine. Number eight, not the song by Ozzy Osbourne, but the actual score from the movie because Hellraiser is so fucked up. It was a fucked up series. Although, you know, it's that sexy kind of fucked up. You know, not like a Serbian film, uh, but you know, the normal kind of 
you know, the end of that yang, that's the extreme bad, this is uh, extreme good. You know, well, that's like Pinhead said, you know, devils to some, demons to some, angels to others. A wink, wink. But anyway, the score from Hellraiser is so, it's like so epically gothic. It's like a metal orchestra. When I say metal, I'm not talking about robotic. I'm talking about like, you know, uh, Slayer metal. But like an orchestra of every, where everyone is the metal aesthetic jamming out a score. That in its, fu well, no, I think, you got some of them like that for the harsh hits, but then the other ones are more like, you know, Pretty Hate Machine era Nine Inch Nails, you know, very hunched over and subdued for the gothic aspect, uh, aspect of it. And then you got the metal, you know, just the, just the epicness of like a badass Finnish rock band, uh, metal band. So it's really fucking good. Uh, highly recommend that one. Click it right, Viv. Number seven. Amy at ES. Nightmare on Elm Street. Doom, 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 doom. You know, when you hear that, you're like, oh, fuck, I'm in a dream. Well, they don't know it in the movie. But as the audience, you're like, this bitch is in a motherfucking dream. Come on, Freddy, create, kill him in the most creative way possible, because that's why you got my 650. And yes, when these movies came out, the movie at night was actually a little less, like, it started at 550, and by the end of the decade, you know. You know, I guess it depends where you go to the movies at. Anyway, but Nightmare on Elm Street, fucking fantastic. Absolutely epic. Uh, you know, it's one that I, I tend to hear more and more these days, like in terms of, like, when you're at a restaurant or a radio station to a Halloween playlist. You always hear the Halloween theme. You know, people always joke about, kick, kick. More on that late, those later, wink, wink. Um, but this one is getting more rotation, as the old bats say, in the radio business. Number six, speaking of kill, 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 ma, ma, ma. Harry Manfredini's amazing score, although very repetitive score, for Friday the 13th. Again, we're talking horror themes here, themes that accentuate the movie, that heighten the tension, all that kind of fun stuff. Mm. So you got all that going on. And it's just, it's effective. It's got the echoey, like you're lost in the woods and, you know, somebody's saying something, you can't quite hear them, but it echoes because you're alone in the woods. Except you got, you know, Alice Cooper in the woods with you. But it's really fucking good, really great. Uh, and I keep, I think I keep saying those things for all of them. They're just great, they're just great, they're great. Um, but speaking of epic, the Exorcist score tubular bells spooky as fuck I used to work at a Winn-Dixie in the south when I was in, in high school and they would play tubular bells like during Halloween like on the the whole franchise's radio system or whatever because like you know this was the 80s and so people my age then it was their Halloween theme I guess even the Halloween theme technically existed shortly after but uh, the Exorcist was such a huge thing and Halloween was too but Exorcist was like bigger than Halloween because it's a big budget movie. But the score for The Exorcist, iconic, creepy as fuck. And like, I don't ever want to hear this theme unless it's October or the Halloween season because that's when the second I hear this theme, that's what I think about. Being outside wearing a jacket, brown leaves hitting my face. Haha. <laughs> Number four, what the fuck is this you're thinking? Why is there you know some old dead dude well, a lot of, there's a lot of old dead dudes that I like because I'm fucking old. Uh, you know, this you know, dude from that Bill and Ted didn't bring back, an excellent adventure, uh, Johann Sebastian Bach, not the singer of Skid Row. Sorry. Sorry, Cougars. Claws in. Claws in. Thank you. But the original. Now, what is this song? I've never fucking heard it. Yes, you have. You never knew the name. Most of you probably, you know, I was today years old when I learned that. Da -da -da. Da, na, na, na. What's the kata in fugue? I don't know how to pronounce this fucking song. The kata in fuge? In fugue? I don't fucking know. Let me know in the comments. Make a reaction video where you say, It's fucking fuge, you dumb bitch. Anyway, you've heard this. It's, you know, the, fan, the Phantom of the Opera is always associated with the Phantom of the Opera. In a 90s or 80s sitcom, anytime it was a spooky episode and somebody was near a piano or something was creepy, you'd always hear, da, na, na. You've heard this, and now you know the fucking name. You're welcome. Subscribe, like, leave a heart. All that fun shit. Makes my days. So yeah, top three. Number three, again, effective, terrifying. 
iconic. All three of those in the Jaws theme by Sir Sean Williams. Uh, oh, what else did he do? Uh, oh, Superman. Chris Clark, uh, Clark Kent. Duh, he's always Clark Kent. Christopher Reeve, Superman. Dun, 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 dun. Indiana motherfucking Jones. Dun, 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 dun. And let's not be, you know, let's not be stupid. Star Wars. I didn't need a helmet because you heard it in your head. Boom. But anyway, the, the Jaws theme. You know, the shark wasn't working. So Spielberg, you know, did a lot of first person. And, you know, so anyway, the shark was there. But nothing made the shark seem more there, so to speak, or the terror looming than hearing the, the menacing... <laughs> parody, probably, honestly, the most of any other... of everyone on, on this list, honestly. This is probably the most parody. It's in everything. Anytime there's a shark, anytime there's a shark joke, anytime there's a at the beach, you hear the motherfucking Jaws theme. And it's fucking epic. Fantastic. It's terrifying. I don't want to hear it in the bathtub. I'll get out the fucking tub. I'll stop reading comic books and get out of the motherfucking tub if I hear this theme. So yeah, top two. Number two. Wee. Actually, I'm going to do this hand. Wee, 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 It's terrifying and psycho, but imagine if you know you just see this. Yes, this. I think that's way more terrifying, to be honest. But yeah, the score for Psycho... You know, next to the Jaws theme, it's like neck and neck with like, you know what, Jaws, take it back what I said earlier, Jaws is the second most parodied horror theme, number one's got to be Psycho, and I say that because it's like 50 years older than Jaws, I know it's not 50, it's like 20 something, uh, yeah, you know, so take that back, excellent call, uh, but Psycho, you know, anytime anybody's holding a weapon, you know, it's, wee, 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 wee. You know, the, the high strings, whatever. I don't know what the exact track is called. Uh, it's not Takata and Fugue. But everybody knows the Psycho theme. It's everywhere. It was... It was like something on, my, on like Windows 95 when it first came. I'm really fucking dating myself. They like, we had sounds or something. And then you could pick strings. And the, the like, the, the, um, the demo for strings was ring, ring, ring. So me and my family, like I will, I say me and my family, but me, my siblings, I just sit there and just look, to listen to the psycho theme, I just hit that button when I want to hear the psycho theme. I'm motherfucking psycho. But anyway, psycho, obviously, iconic, epic. And the shower scene is not the shower scene without the score. And a movie that is not itself without the score is absolutely John Carpenter's Halloween number one horror theme, uh, or Timmy's, which I like to say now. You know, it sounds like you're saying Timmy's. Like multiple Timmies from South Park. Timmies. Or Timmies. You know, like a, give a little accent. Timmies. I love a good Timmies. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going with that. But anyway, the Halloween theme is bar none. The most iconic, effective, and the other third thing I said, times two thing, that makes a, you know, a horror theme a theme and makes it memorable, epic, and incredible. I mean, millions of... I mean, this is probably the one that people have for their ringtone the most, is the Halloween theme. You know, I'm always... I'll always be out... You know, well, COVID keeps us in, but when you're out and around this time of year, somebody's phone goes off in public because I forgot to put it on silent. Excuse me. It's more than likely the motherfucking Halloween theme. I ain't hating. This just... That's just illustrating my point. I got it on my phone, but I don't use it because... <laughs> you know, if, if that's your ringtone and it goes off... Just as many people are going to, like, look at their phone or check their phone and see if that was them um, as, like, you know, the people have the default tone because they're too old to know how to change their fucking ringtone. Mom. Anyway, that's my pick for the top ten best horror themes. As always, it's on this side now, Viv. Like, or no, like, some, like, subscribe, watch another one, tell your friends. I'm just doing this to have fun. But it's more fun when there's a conversation to be had, which is why I do this live on Twitch, and we chat there before and after, which is where I'll be now, or in just a few seconds. Uh, so, but until next time, stay spooky, stay scary, and stay frosty. Mm -hmm.